Stepping into the cozy confines of my cherished country bar and grill, I found solace in the familiarity of it all, navigating through the bustling crowd until I settled upon a quaint spot nestled in the quieter recesses of the establishment. With a flick of my wrist, I beckoned the server, promptly placing an order for a delectable sandwich, a side of crispy fries, and an ice-cold beer to wash it all down. Seated comfortably, my attention gravitated towards the television screen, inadvertently tuned into a PBS channel where the discussion unfurled in homage to the timeless allure of country music. As the narratives unfolded, weaving tales of yesteryears and the luminaries who once graced the stage, a subtle undercurrent of melancholy permeated the air, accentuating the hardships many of these legends endured, emerging from humble beginnings fraught with poverty. Engrossed in both my meal and the televised reminiscence, I chanced upon the entrance of my closest confidant, Bob, accompanied by Olivia, whose presence struck me with a jolt of unexpected realization. You see, in the depths of my heart, I harbored the belief that Olivia and I shared something special, an unspoken understanding that transcended mere companionship. Six months of shared moments, weekends intertwined, and whispers of a future together had led me to believe that we were unequivocally committed, inching ever closer to the precipice of something profound. Yet, as I watched them enter, the truth dawned upon me like a sudden storm on a tranquil horizon. For Olivia, whom I had invited out for the evening under the guise of celebration, had purportedly already committed to other engagements differing our plans to an uncertain tomorrow. The weight of her absence bore down upon me, punctuating the realization that perhaps the narrative I had woven in my mind was not shared in its entirety. The somber strains of crazy reverberated through the jukebox, its lyrics echoing sentiments that mirrored the tumult within my own soul. In that moment, as the ballad unfolded with poignant clarity, I found myself grappling with the stark realization that perhaps I had been but a fleeting chapter in Olivia's story destined to be replaced by a new protagonist. The realization gnawed at me, casting doubt upon the foundation of trust and affection upon which I had built my hopes. And there, amidst the ebb and flow of the music, I confronted the stark reality that perhaps I had been naive to assume otherwise. Summoning the strength within, I rose from my seat, traversing the distance between us with measured steps, confronting Bob and Olivia with a resolve born of betrayal. Their gaze met mine, and amidst the discordant din of the bar, words of reproach spilled forth born of a wounded heart laid bare. Bob's retort, laden with defiance, echoed through the haze of disappointment, punctuating the finality of a bond severed by deceit. And yet, amidst the chaos, a lone figure persisted, its familiarity a bittersweet reminder of a bond once cherished. Alice Bob's steadfast companion, whose unwavering loyalty stood in stark contrast to the betrayal that had shattered my world. With each unanswered call, each silent plea for reconciliation, the distance between us grew, a chasm forged by the shards of broken trust. In the wake of betrayal, I found solace in the certainty of solitude, retreating into the sanctuary of my own thoughts as I grappled with the shattered remnants of a love once promised. And amidst the cacophony of regret and recrimination, I found the strength to rebuild, to forge a new path untethered by the echoes of a past best left behind. Torn apart by the burgeoning attraction I felt towards Alice, I remained steadfast in my commitment to the unspoken code of loyalty that bound Bob and me as brothers in arms. Growing up in the heartland of Kentucky, amidst the sprawling expanse of farmland and the warmth of familial bonds forged through adversity, I learned the value of integrity and honor from a young age. With eight siblings to shepherd and nurture, I assumed the mantle of responsibility as the eldest, navigating the tempestuous currents of adolescence with a steadfast resolve honed on the gridiron of high school football fields. Standing tall at six feet three inches and tipping the scales at a solid 260 pounds, I carved out a niche for myself as an offensive lineman, harnessing the raw power of youth to propel myself towards a brighter future. It was in the twilight of my high school years that fortune smiled upon me, bestowing upon me a scholarship to a college in Ohio, a beacon of hope amidst the uncertainty that shrouded my family's modest means. With dreams of becoming a mechanical engineer dancing tantalizingly on the horizon, 
I seized the opportunity with both hands, driven by an insatiable thirst for knowledge and a love for the artistry of craftsmanship. It was during these formative years that fate intertwined our destinies, casting me into the orbit of a man named Bob, whose affable demeanor and quick wit belied a hunger for success that mirrored my own aspirations. Though our paths diverged in myriad ways, our bond remained unbroken, a testament to the enduring power of friendship forged in the fires of shared experiences. Together, we traversed the hallowed halls of academia, our dreams intertwined with the promise of a brighter tomorrow beckoning us forth. Her name was Alice, a vision of grace and beauty amidst the chaos of the modern world, her laughter a symphony of joy that danced upon the winds of fate. Introduced to me by Bob, whose affections for her were plain for all to see, I found myself ensnared in the tangled web of desire, torn between the loyalty that bound me to my friend and the yearning that stirred within my heart. Though the temptation to succumb to the allure of forbidden love was great, I remained steadfast in my resolve, honoring the sanctity of the unspoken pact that bound Bob and me as brothers in arms. For while the heart may yearn for that which it cannot have, the bonds of friendship are forged in the crucible of shared experiences and tempered by the fires of adversity. And so, I navigated the treacherous waters of romantic entanglement with a sense of caution and restraint, mindful of the consequences that lay in wait should I succumb to the siren song of temptation. And though the road ahead may be fraught with uncertainty and peril, I take solace in the knowledge that the bonds of friendship forged in the crucible of adversity are stronger than any fleeting passion or transient desire. Circumstances conspired to set the stage for a whirlwind of emotions as Alice's presence stirred dormant feelings within me, her sweetness a constant reminder of the bonds we shared. It was amidst the backdrop of the plant's Christmas shindig, an event orchestrated by Bob, our supplier, that fate intervened, ushering in a chance encounter with a bewitching figure by the name of Olivia. Clad in attire that accentuated her curves and endowed with a captivating charm, Olivia's allure was undeniable, her flirtatious demeanor casting a spell that proved irresistible. In the aftermath of our encounter, Olivia and I embarked upon a journey of discovery, navigating the labyrinthine corridors of romance with a sense of trepidation and excitement. Despite the stark contrast between our respective backgrounds, our connection deepened with each passing day, fueled by a shared understanding and a mutual desire for companionship. As our relationship blossomed, I found myself grappling with the dichotomy between Olivia's materialistic aspirations and my own modest means, her penchant for luxury at odds with my frugal sensibilities. Yet, Amidst the discordant notes that threatened to disrupt the harmony of our union, there remained a flicker of hope, a belief that love could transcend the boundaries of wealth and privilege. And then, in a moment that shattered the fragile facade of trust and fidelity, I bore witness to the ultimate betrayal, as my beloved Olivia and my closest friend, Bob, shared a kiss that laid bare the depths of their deceit. In the aftermath of this revelation, I found myself adrift in a sea of confusion and heartache, grappling with the harsh reality of betrayal and abandonment. Summoning the last vestiges of my strength, I severed all ties with those who had betrayed me, casting aside the shards of broken promises and shattered dreams. And as I stood amidst the wreckage of my shattered illusions, I resolved to chart a new course, one untethered by the weight of betrayal and deceit. With each passing day, I find solace in the knowledge that true happiness lies not in the fleeting pleasures of the flesh, but in the enduring bonds of loyalty and integrity that endure through the passage of time. And though the road ahead may be fraught with uncertainty and peril, I take comfort in the knowledge that I am not alone, guided by the wisdom of my past and the promise of a brighter tomorrow. More slow songs, and I asked Alice to dance again, which she gladly accepted. As we swayed to the rhythm of the music, the world seemed to fade away, leaving only the two of us enveloped in a cocoon of shared intimacy. With each step, each gentle movement, I felt a sense of connection and understanding blossom between us, transcending the boundaries of words and thoughts. As the night wore on, we found ourselves immersed in conversation, delving into the depths of our shared pasts and aspirations for the future. Alice shared stories of her upbringing in Kentucky, painting vivid pictures of idyllic summers spent roaming the countryside and the warmth of family gatherings. I, in turn, regaled her with tales of my own childhood, 
weaving a tapestry of memories colored by the laughter of siblings and the camaraderie of friends. Despite the passage of time and the trials we had faced, there remained an undeniable bond between us, forged in the crucible of shared experiences and tempered by the fires of adversity. And as we danced beneath the soft glow of the neon lights, I found myself entranced by the beauty of the moment, grateful for the opportunity to reconnect with someone who had once held a special place in my heart. And so, as the stars twinkled overhead and the world slumbered in the embrace of night, I made a silent vow to cherish each moment, to savor each precious second spent in the company of the woman who had captured my heart once more. For in her, I had found not just a lover, but a confidant, a friend, and a kindred spirit with whom to navigate the winding roads of life's journey. And as the first light of dawn broke across the horizon, illuminating the world with its golden glow, I knew that, with Alice by my side, anything was possible. That it was a formal affair and asked if she would accompany me as my date she sounded thrilled at the prospect and readily agreed, expressing her excitement at the opportunity to attend such an elegant event with me. As the days passed, Anticipation bubbled within me, each passing moment bringing us closer to the evening of the celebration. When the night finally arrived, I spared no effort in ensuring that everything was perfect, from selecting the perfect suit to arranging transportation to the hotel. As Alice emerged from her apartment, resplendent in a stunning gown that accentuated her natural beauty, I felt a surge of pride wash over me grateful for the chance to escort such a radiant companion to the event. Upon our arrival at the Hilton Hotel, we were greeted by the sounds of laughter and conversation, the air abuzz with the energy of anticipation. As we mingled with the other guests, Alice's grace and charm drew admiring glances from all who beheld her, a testament to her undeniable allure and magnetic presence. Throughout the evening, we danced and laughed, lost in the magic of the moment, each step bringing us closer together. And as the night wore on and the festivities drew to a close, I found myself overcome with gratitude for the chance to share such a special occasion with someone as remarkable as Alice. As we bid farewell to our hosts and made our way back to her apartment, I knew that this was just the beginning of a journey filled with laughter, love, and shared experiences. And as we embraced beneath the soft glow of the streetlights, I felt a sense of peace wash over me, grateful for the chance to embark upon this new chapter of our lives together. As we stepped through the threshold of her apartment, hand in hand, I knew that, with Alice by my side, anything was possible. And as we settled into the warmth and comfort of her home, surrounded by the echoes of laughter and the promise of tomorrow, I knew that, in her, I had found not just a companion but a soulmate, a kindred spirit with whom to share life's joys and sorrows. I made sure to inform Alice that I had secured a hotel room for the night, anticipating the revelry and imbibing that typically accompanied such events. I reassured her that I understood if she harbored any reservations about attending, considering the circumstances. However, her response was one of eager enthusiasm, expressing her delight at the prospect of accompanying me. With a playful tone, she remarked that we wouldn't require two beds, alluding to her growing affection for me tempered by a plea for honesty and transparency in our burgeoning relationship. Promising to tread carefully and protect her heart from harm, I assured her that my intentions were genuine, devoid of any malice or deceit. During our journey, Alice confided in me about her growing discomfort at the prospect of encountering Bob and Olivia at her workplace, hinting at her contemplation of seeking alternative employment. She even shared a tantalizing rumor regarding Olivia's purported pregnancy, further complicating the tangled web of relationships that surrounded us. Upon our arrival at the hotel, we wasted no time in preparing for the evening's festivities. As I donned my tuxedo in the bathroom, I marveled at Alice's radiant presence, her form-fitting blue dress accentuating her curves and her cascading hair framing her exquisite features. Her beauty was both elegant and alluring, a sight to behold as she emerged from the bedroom, eliciting a compliment from me that was met with a playful retort, signaling the beginning of a night filled with laughter and camaraderie. Descending to the party, we were greeted warmly by my boss and his wife, who extended their hospitality with genuine warmth. As we mingled with the other guests, Alice's grace and charm drew admiring glances from all who beheld her, 
a testament to her undeniable allure and magnetic presence. Throughout the evening, we danced and laughed, lost in the enchantment of the moment, our connection deepening with each step and every shared glance. And as the night wore on and the festivities reached their crescendo, I found myself grateful for the chance to share such a special occasion with someone as remarkable as Alice. To start a fight with you but you diffused the situation by simply talking to them like human beings that's when I realized I was in love with you Alice recounted with a wistful smile as she wiped away her tears my heart swelled with emotion at her words, realizing the depth of her feelings for me. We spent the rest of the evening basking in the warmth of my family's hospitality, sharing stories and laughter as we forged new memories together. The following day, we embarked on a tour of my hometown, visiting familiar landmarks and reminiscing about days gone by. Alice marveled at the quaint charm of the small town, captivated by its rustic beauty and the warmth of its inhabitants. As we strolled hand in hand through the streets, I felt a sense of pride swell within me, grateful for the chance to share this part of my life with someone as special as Alice. During our visit, Alice confided in me about the latest gossip surrounding Bob and Olivia's impending nuptials, her words tinged with a mixture of disbelief and resignation. I couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for Olivia, knowing that she was about to embark on a journey fraught with uncertainty and disappointment. Yet, Amidst the chaos of their tumultuous relationship, I found solace in the knowledge that Alice and I had found something real and enduring, a love that transcended the petty dramas of everyday life. As our trip drew to a close and we bid farewell to my family, I knew that this was just the beginning of a new chapter in our lives together. With each passing day, our bond grew stronger, fortified by the shared experiences and trials that we had faced together. And as we embarked on the journey back home, hand in hand, I felt a sense of peace wash over me, grateful for the chance to have Alice by my side. As we settled into the familiar comfort of our routine, I knew that, no matter what the future held, we would face it together, united in our love and commitment to each other. And as we navigated the winding roads of life's journey, I took comfort in the knowledge that, with Alice by my side, anything was possible. For in her, I had found not just a partner, but a confidant, a friend, and a kindred spirit with whom to share life's joys and sorrows. And as we embraced the challenges and triumphs that lay ahead, I knew that our love would endure, steadfast and unwavering, a beacon of hope amidst the uncertainty of the world. Reflecting on that incident in the tunnel, the memory feels vivid and raw, as if it happened just yesterday. It was a brisk autumn evening, and the lights from the stadium cast eerie shadows across the field. I remember the urgency in her voice, the desperation as she pleaded with those two thugs to let her go. And then, there was me, number 67, stepping in fueled by a surge of protective instinct I didn't know I had. The scuffle was brief but intense, adrenaline coursing through my veins as I grappled with the assailants, determined to shield her from harm. I issued a stern warning, a promise tinged with the weight of conviction that they would face consequences if they ever dared to bother her again. As for how she came to know about it, it's a tale of chance and fate intertwining in the most unexpected of ways. She was that girl in the yellow sweater, a stranger whose face I never saw, yet whose presence left an indelible mark on my memory. In the aftermath of the incident, she searched for me, driven by a need to express her gratitude to the stranger who had come to her rescue. But fate seemed to conspire against her, obscuring my identity in a shroud of anonymity. All she knew was my name, Charles, a fleeting fragment of information in a vast sea of faces. Her quest to find me led her down countless dead ends, her determination matched only by her frustration at the elusive nature of her search. Yet, despite the obstacles she faced, she persevered, fueled by the memory of that fleeting encounter in the tunnel. It wasn't until years later, by a stroke of serendipity, that our paths crossed once again, this time in the most unlikely of settings, a crowded bar bustling with activity and noise. It was there, amidst the throng of revelers and the cacophony of laughter and music, that she finally found the closure she had been seeking. As she recounted her tale, her words hung in the air, pregnant with emotion, each syllable laden with the weight of years of longing and uncertainty. And when she leaned in to kiss me, her lips soft against mine, 
it felt like a culmination of destiny, a merging of two souls bound together by the threads of fate. There was something undeniably familiar about her, a connection that transcended the confines of time and space, anchoring us to each other in ways we couldn't fully comprehend. As the night wore on, we found ourselves drawn to each other, the barriers of hesitation and uncertainty crumbling in the face of an undeniable attraction. And when she whispered those three simple words, I love you, it felt like coming home, a moment of clarity amidst the chaos of life's uncertainties. In that instant, I knew that she was the one, the missing piece of the puzzle that had eluded me for so long. The days that followed were a whirlwind of emotions, a blur of shared laughter and quiet moments of intimacy. We talked for hours on end, sharing our hopes, our dreams, our fears, laying bare our souls in a way that felt both exhilarating and terrifying. And as we delved deeper into each other's lives, we discovered that we were more alike than we had ever imagined, two souls navigating the tumultuous waters of existence, seeking solace and companionship in each other's arms. Our journey together was just beginning, a tapestry of shared experiences waiting to be woven, each thread a testament to the strength of our bond. And as we stood on the precipice of an uncertain future, hand in hand, hearts entwined, I knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, bound by a love that was as enduring as it was profound. As the days passed, our journey toward matrimony seemed to gather momentum, fueled by the warmth and support of our families. After bidding farewell to our relatives, who had warmly welcomed Alice into the fold, we promised to keep them updated on the details of our impending wedding, a joyous occasion that promised to be a celebration of love and unity. Just before we retired for the night, Alice leaned in close to whisper a revelation she had received from my mom a warning about an obstacle on the stairs. Little did we know, it was a pair of shoes that had accidentally tumbled down the stairs due to Alice's inadvertent kick. Yet, Mom's response was filled with grace and understanding, reassuring Alice with a knowing smile that echoed the vivacity of her own youth. Despite the mishap, Alice and I shared a tender and intimate moment together, the warmth of our connection casting a soft glow over the quiet hours of the night. Come Monday, Alice faced her appointment with the HR department at Ford with a mixture of excitement and nervous anticipation. And by Tuesday, the news arrived like a beacon of hope she had secured the job, a testament to her hard work and determination. As we celebrated over dinner at my favorite country bar, Alice shared snippets of gossip about Bob and Olivia, whose vacation escapades seemed worlds away from our own burgeoning happiness. In the weeks that followed, Alice navigated the intricacies of her new role with grace and poise, her engagement ring a silent testament to our shared commitment. Yet, amidst the hustle and bustle of work, she found time to craft a cleverly worded note for Bob, a subtle reminder of the secrets he harbored and the consequences that awaited him. And as she fielded the advances of curious suitors with a radiant smile, she made it clear that her heart belonged to me, her steadfast companion and confidant. With Joan's assistance, Alice began to weave the threads of our wedding plans, each detail carefully considered and lovingly crafted. And as the days turned into weeks, our anticipation grew, each moment bringing us closer to the day when we would stand before our loved ones and pledge our eternal devotion to one another. In the midst of wedding preparations, Joan emerged as a pillar of support, offering guidance and assistance like a caring guardian. With her own experiences as a mother and a married daughter, Joan shared a special bond with Alice, their friendship deepening as they navigated the intricacies of wedding planning together, sharing expenses as roommates while I made regular visits to lend a hand whenever needed. Seeking to ensure a memorable celebration, I reached out to my mom, who took charge of compiling a guest list and arranging invitations, relieving us of that responsibility. With the date set for four months ahead, Alice shared the news with her parents, who eagerly took on the task of securing a suitable church and reception venue, along with coordinating invitations for their side of the family. Despite my initial anxiety about my contribution to the wedding preparations, I was pleasantly surprised by the enthusiastic response from colleagues at work, many of whom expressed their intention to attend the wedding in Kentucky, thanks to Joan's connections. 
Meanwhile, Joan arranged for a dressmaker for Alice's gown and confirmed her own and her daughter Sophie's attendance at the event. Sophie, Alice's mother, further eased our burden by securing a caterer and arranging for a talented band, demonstrating her commitment to making the day truly special. As the pieces fell into place, I couldn't help but wonder if we were going overboard with the preparations, prompting a candid conversation with Alice. Her revelation about her family's wealth caught me off guard, but she reassured me that her feelings for me remained unchanged. I admired her sincerity and agreed that a prenuptial agreement wasn't necessary, as our love was built on trust and commitment, not material possessions. Amidst the planning, Alice sorted out her wedding party lineup, with her father proudly walking her down the aisle, her older sister serving as maid of honor, and her younger sister as a bridesmaid. She extended invitations to my two married sisters, cementing the bonds that would unite our families on our special day. As we finalized the wedding details, we ensured that every family member had a role to play. My brothers-in-law eagerly accepted their roles as groomsmen, while my single brothers were paired with Alice's sisters, fostering familial connections on both sides. To my surprise, my younger brother stepped up as my best man, while my niece and nephew were chosen as the adorable flower girl and ring bearer, respectively. Thankfully, everyone we reached out to gladly accepted their roles, making it a true family affair. Meanwhile, Alice flourished in her new job, winning the admiration of her colleagues with her warm personality and strong work ethic. Her presence at the workplace was a breath of fresh air, and it was evident that she was well-loved by all. After all, what's not to like about someone as charming as Alice? However, a dilemma arose when we realized that Alice hadn't accrued any vacation days due to her recent employment. With the wedding approaching rapidly, we brainstormed various options and eventually settled on the idea of a whirlwind trip, leaving on Friday night, getting married on Saturday, and returning on Sunday. It seemed ambitious, but given our limited choices, it was the most feasible plan. Just when we thought everything was set, a pleasant surprise awaited us. The plant manager, with whom I shared a good rapport, summoned me to his office. He not only approved Alice's time off from Thursday to the following week but also presented us with two tickets for a four-day cruise as a wedding gift. I couldn't believe our luck and immediately shared the news with Alice over lunch. Her reaction was priceless, tears of joy filled her eyes as she realized the extent of the generosity bestowed upon us. With our wedding plans now more relaxed and luxurious, thanks to the unexpected time off and the cruise tickets, we could focus on enjoying our special day to the fullest. As the wedding day approached, we immersed ourselves in the excitement of the preparations. Rehearsals and dinner went smoothly, and I ensured that my father had everything he needed, respecting his independence and resourcefulness. With anticipation building and our families eagerly awaiting the celebration, we knew that Saturday would be a day to remember. Waking up in the morning, my mother insisted that I have breakfast, knowing well that a hungry and anxious stomach would do me no good for the day ahead. Over our morning meal, she shared her impression of the Carters, finding them to be genuinely friendly people who held me in high regard. After breakfast, I indulged in a long shower, taking my time to shave and prepare for the day ahead. Donning my white tuxedo, matching Alice's dress, I joined my brothers, all clad in black tuxedos, ready to fulfill our roles in the wedding party. Our journey to the church, nestled in the neighboring county, was a short 20-mile drive. Arriving at the impressive church, my brothers and I immediately jumped into action, assisting guests in finding their seats. Despite their protests, I insisted on helping, eager to contribute in any way possible. As the church filled with familiar faces and long-lost relatives, I directed Joan and her daughter to their seats among Alice's family, thrilled to see such a diverse gathering. With the guests settled, I was instructed to move to the front of the church, as Alice's arrival in her limousine signaled the imminent start of the ceremony. Taking a moment to chat with my parents, the solemn notes of the organ filled the air, signaling the beginning of the ceremony. With each familiar face walking down the aisle, accompanied by my brothers, the anticipation grew. Then came the moment I had been waiting for, Alice's entrance. As she glided down the aisle on her father's arm, radiating beauty and grace, 
I couldn't help but be overcome with emotion. Tears welled up in my eyes as I watched her approach, feeling as though I were beholding an angel descending from heaven. The exchange of vows was a moment of profound significance, symbolizing our commitment to one another. Placing the ring on Alice's finger felt like sealing our bond in eternity. And finally, the moment arrived for that magical first kiss as husband and wife met with cheers and applause from our loved ones. As we exited the church, greeted by the warm applause of our guests, I couldn't help but feel overwhelmed with gratitude for the love and support surrounding us. At the reception hall, drinks flowed freely, and appetizers were savored as guests mingled and enjoyed the festivities. With music filling the air, the dance floor beckoned, inviting guests to celebrate our joyous union with every step. Throughout the evening, amidst laughter and merriment, I found myself repeatedly glancing at Alice, my heart overflowing with love and gratitude for the woman who had become my wife. As the night wore on, I realized that this day, filled with love, laughter, and cherished moments, would forever hold a special place in our hearts. As we made our grand entrance, the entire crowd rose to their feet, showering us with cheers and applause. Taking our seats, Mr. Carter, in his kind manner, offered a few words before announcing that dinner was served. The serving tables, expertly arranged on either side of the venue, ensured that everyone was served promptly, though Alice and I being the newlyweds, found ourselves served first but finishing last as we paused frequently for kisses, much to the delight of our guests. In response to the traditional glass clinking, signaling for us to kiss, some tables were pushed back to create more space on the dance floor. Eager to lead the way, Alice and I were the first to grace the dance floor, followed by the rest of the wedding party, and soon enough, the entire gathering joined in the revelry. The reception continued for a solid four hours, with guests indulging in another round of delicious food, adding to the festive atmosphere of the night. Our cruise was a delightful escape, made all the better by the joy of our wedding celebration. Returning home, we began the search for a new house, eventually finding a cozy three-bedroom home complete with a relaxing hot tub. While we initially spent a couple of weeks at my small apartment, Alice felt a larger space was in order. We entrusted the wedding gifts to Joan's care, grateful for her assistance. Alice received startling news about Bob's financial woes and the uncertainty surrounding Olivia's pregnancy, rumors swirling about a potential DNA test. Weeks later, another call confirmed the outcome, Bob wasn't the father. The twists and turns of life continue to surprise us, but through it all, our bond remains strong.